Hi, and welcome to my workshop. Are you ready to learn how to make mountains using Woodland Scenics shaper sheets and how to add ground cover to those mountains? And have you ever wondered how you would go about painting your track to make it look more realistic? You have come to the right place. In this video, we're going to go through all three of those topics. If you are ready to learn, let's get started. So this is the project that I've got. I have to create a kind of a sloped mountain scene that joins these two tracks. I have one that's uh, the lower one is setting at about four inches and the upper one setting about six inches. So I think shaper sheets are going to be perfect because I'll be able to just cut out the width of the sheets that I need and install them and connect these two lines together, so to speak, uh, on an upward grade. So that's the plan. So I got my measurements, the distance between the two uh, between the two tracks, and you just turn the shaper sheet upside down so the foil is side up. Uh, make my marks based on my measurements, and then you have to cut it. And in the Woodland Scenics video, they show people using just regular scissors. Uh, I can tell you, regular scissors don't cut it, <laughs> literally. So um, I chose to use a pair of tin snips, and they cut through that aluminum uh, really well. Once I've got the uh, pieces cut out, now it's just a matter of crinkling them up uh, to make the terrain of the mountains. And I've done that now for the two pieces that I need uh, to join together along that strip. And now I have an option. One option is at this point, I could either lay down some uh, plaster cloth and add plaster cloth to the shaper sheets and if I do that, I'll get a pretty smooth look or a smoother look for the mountains. If I wanted a more rugged look, I would use a shaper sheet plaster. It's a special plaster, much like Hydrocol. And uh, I chose this. Here you can see the difference between the two. On the left, you got the plaster cloth. And on the right, I did a piece with the shaper sheet plaster. You see it looks a little bit more rugged if that's the look you're looking for. And uh, here it is uh, painted with some ground cover. So now that I've got the pieces uh, cut out, uh, I've got them formed into almost like a semicircle. So now that I've got those uh, strips cut to the right length, it's time for me to glue them in place. And this was a little bit more difficult than I thought because I only had about two to three inches of space to work with as I tried to squeeze these in and glue them into place. But it did work out. And uh, here you see the finished product where they're all glued in. And all I had to do after this was add some earth tone uh, paint and then some ground cover, which you see pictured here. So we're letting that dry. And speaking of ground cover, let's talk about some of the best practices for applying ground cover that I've found. In this scene, um, before I'm adding the ground cover, I've actually painted that plaster with a 50-50 solution of earth undercoat paint and water, let that dry. And then now it's time to add the ground cover. And I'm adding a 50-50 mixture of glue and water first, doing small sections at a time. And then what I found really worked well is sprinkling on the ground cover literally with your fingers, just as you see pictured here. It gives you much better control of how much ground cover you're applying and where it's all going. So uh, that was a good process. And uh, now is a good time to let that dry and then add in different shades of ground cover to add depth and interest to your scene. And that's what I'll be doing next. I'm just letting this dry right now and then I'll be adding some different shades of ground cover to start sprucing it up and I'll be adding shrubs and trees and things like that. Okay, let's talk about painting the track. The first question you might ask is, why the heck do you want to paint the track? Here's my story. This is why I decided to do it. I'm using Code 100 track, and as most of you know, Code 100 track is going to have uh, black colored uh, rail ties. And that was fine for me for the first two lines that I did in my layout. But for this third line that I put down, it's going to be exclusively mountain scenes, and I wanted something a little bit different. So some advice I got from another model railroader was, hey, just paint the Code 100 track dark brown. And he gave me some tips on how to do it, and I'm going to share that with you now, because this is exactly how I did it. Um, I went out and bought some Rust-Oleum uh, satin uh, dark brown paint. And as I went around to paint the track, I had some cardboard because, you know, this gets a little messy. 
So I put the cardboard up to make sure the paint didn't get anywhere I didn't want it to get, and then gave it a very light brush uh, coating with paint, just like a couple of times like that, and that was all I did. So it's very light, it's all it takes. And um, I let that dry for about 24 hours. When the 24 hours was up, the next project I had, as you can imagine, there's some paint, not some paint, there is paint all over the rails, and that had to come off. So the first step is to take a scraper, and I simply scrape the paint right off the rails, just like that. And that worked pretty well. But then to get the little details of the paint off that I might have missed, I used a very fine grade sandpaper. This happens to be a 220 grade sandpaper very fine and after I scraped all the rails off then I gave it a, a little bit of a light sanding with the sandpaper and then I had one more step to do and that was to give it a good cleaning with a chemical now I found a product it's called CRC electronic cleaner right there and what this stuff does it cleans small electronics safely but it also increases electric uh, connectivity between products so you can spray a little bit of this stuff like on the wheels of your locomotives and then spray a little bit on the rails and all I did when I cleaned the rest of my track with this stuff sprayed a little bit on a towel like this and just gave the rails a little bit of cleaning just like that it dries quickly and boy I gotta tell you there's a lot of track cleaner products that are out there and I've used, I think, all of them. This stuff is awesome. Uh, this worked great. My, I noticed a difference in how my trains ran after I used this on the track. So this worked so good on my third line, I went around and cleaned the other two lines of my layout with this stuff as well. And my trains are running a lot better now. So it works. So just to sum things up, we said that the Woodland Scenics Shaper Sheet product is a good product. In fact, I'll be using it again when I make my next mountain scene. The only issue with them was that you have to use tin snips in order to cut them. And if you're going to use a track cleaner, I recommend the CRC product. It'll clean your track and improve electronic connectivity between the locomotive and the track. And then finally, for the ground cover, just use that sprinkle method to control the amount of ground cover you're applying. Thanks for watching. We'll see you again on the next video.